Welcome back to BMA Network. I'm Caitlin Heffler. I'm Jade Taylor. And today we will be discussing the road win at Vandy last night and some more Bama basketball. Also looking forward to our game this weekend against Kansas State. Then we will be going over some more Bama sports and then as well as hitting on our Senior Bowl, and we will be ending this episode with a lot of professional sports talk. Also, as you can see, we are not in our regular atmosphere. <laughs> we have decided to try a new room for when we start interviews. We kind of came up with the idea last week. As you guys saw on Twitter, we tweeted out who you guys might be interested in us having on the show. So we just decided to try out here. We're also working on getting a backdrop and a few other things to really perfect our episodes. <laughs> All right, so let's get started with talking about our huge road win last night. The first thing you have to mention is how important a road win was for Alabama. If you listen to the announcers last night, the first thing that they said at the beginning of the game was when they are looking at who's going to be in the tournament, they're going to ask, who have you played, where have you played them, and who did you beat? So a road win is really important for Alabama because they only have one, and it was in Birmingham, so is it even really considered a road win? So this was a big win for this team last night, especially in that Vanderbilt gym. Everyone knows it's really difficult to coach from and just And really what makes odd. that gym what makes that gym difficult? The coaches, the bench, are actually on the baseline. So Nate Oates is having to coach basically alone over here on his own. He had never been in this gym before, he had never coached in this gym before. So that alone makes it awkward. Also, it's yeah. just very old, and the, the bleachers are, are wooden. I don't know. It's just, like, really odd gym. Well, and there's a lot of talk that since these Vandy players are used to that court, mm -hmm. then because of that, they will play better. And because of, you know, the way that they can see the basket and the way that they're used to practicing there, that they will be able to win. But obviously that did not happen at all. Although I do have to say that we did not play our best game, no. and we seemed completely – Super sloppy. Yes. Super sloppy. Super game. sloppy. Nate Oates even said that we played well enough to win, but we did not play smart. And I completely agree with that. I think that it's definitely a different game than we saw with the Auburn game. Yeah. Before getting into the positives and the great things that helped us win this game, I think we have to focus on the most negative things of the whole game besides just sloppy play in general. We had 25 total turnovers. And Nate Oates has said he would like to keep these turnovers between 8 and 12 a game. He had 15 in the first half, 25 total. That's not going to win games against much harder opponents, especially away games. It's incredible that we even won last night with yeah. a stat like that. We definitely kept them in the game in the first half. Also, it's important to note that Nate Oates and Vanderbilt's coach were both first-year coaches this year, definitely having two different seasons. And also, Vanderbilt's number one leading scorer, which I think might be the leading scorer in the SEC, Aaron Neesmith, just went out a couple weeks ago with injury. So without him, they're definitely struggling this season. Well, and now on to the positives. I think that Petty, of course, had a great game. Um, he really showed up this game. He had five three-pointers in the first 14 minutes of the game. <laughs> However, that, you know, helped us a lot in the beginning, but due to all of our turnovers and our sloppy play, we did give Andy a chance to come back a little bit with three really lazy stolen passes right after inbounds and rebounds. But Jaden Shackford, he kind of brought us back with some of his points. So that was great. Speaking of... Three pointers. John Petty scored a three point a shot to give him 1,000 points in his Alabama career. Consider the player that John Petty was last year in his freshman year versus now, yeah. and he's really developed under Nate Oates. I mean, they all have, mm -hmm. but him especially, and he entered the transfer portal when Avery Johnson was fired and Nate Oates was hired, so Nate kind of had to re recruit John Petty to Alabama, and thankfully he did because he's working so well in the system. Well, and also what makes this team so special to a lot of Alabama basketball fans, Alabama fans in general, is that a lot of players, including John Petty himself, is from Alabama. Mm -hmm. And so this is a team made up of a lot of Alabama guys. So that also draws in a huge audience and fan base for this team. Yeah, speaking of Alabama players from Alabama, we have to talk about Kyra Lewis did not have his best game and hasn't for the past few. I think he's... Oh, off. really? He had 16 points, but he was a turnover machine last game. And he's been in a bit of a funk the past few games, which, you know, there's a lot of talk about, you know, whether he is a good player and whether he's not. But I think that he is not showing up like we know he can. 
Yeah, I I agree in a way. I feel like there's a lot that goes into Kyra as a player. Last night, the people calling the game called him the best player in the SEC. I agree. I think he's a great player. I mean, he's projected to go in this next year's NBA draft. I definitely think he will. It's just he's a young player. He's 18 years yeah. old. He makes mistakes. He actually fouled out of last night's game. So he just needs to work on some maturity mistakes, I suppose. But the kid is incredible. His speed is incredible. If you watch him when he has an open court, it looks like he's running down a tilted court. He's unstoppable. When he gets open, he's great to the rim. It's just like his little mistakes are making him look a little iffy. Well, I think turnovers aren't little mistakes. Those are huge mistakes oh, that are game-changing. And I definitely disagree about him being the best player in the SEC. I think that he is capable of a lot that we have not seen yet. And like you said, I think he's a very aggressive player, very fast. He has a lot of ability, mm -hmm. but I think that we have not seen the best of him yet. But I am looking forward to him improving. I mean, I think that John Petty is a more accurate and better player, in my opinion. But um, I think him being called the best player in the SEC is, I would have to disagree. A little a overrated? Of top, definitely overrated. Okay. Yeah. Also, Herb Jones just continues to impress me. He keeps coming up with more. His offensive, his ball handling yeah. is improving so much. You have to just give credit where it's still with there. The free throws for sure. <laughs> yes, yeah. definitely improving his offensive game. And we already know he's the best defensive player we have. He's continuing to cause problems for the offenses, doing an awesome job. Well, and now Davis injury out for the game, and that he's getting look good. Yeah, he's getting an MRI. However, Nate Oates did say that he's not on crutches, so they don't think that it is as bad of an injury as they you know thought I last night. But it's definitely going to hurt this team losing another forward since we are down so many forwards. Yeah. So um, hopefully we hear back from that MRI. Hopefully, hopefully he's just recovering news. for a few yes. weeks, getting that rehab in is quickly and efficiently as possible. Yes. Along with that, Bama moved up four spots after last night's game in the net rankings to number 38. Alabama currently has a 92.5% chance to make the tournament. They moved up 7% just from yesterday and they're currently likely to be the number eight seed. So that's definitely improving every game if they keep winning, especially on the road. I yeah. believe we may see this team in the tournament. This road win was huge for us yeah. because that's what we need to improve, I think, after winning last night's game. Away games are super important to win with that home court advantage. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of teams that surprisingly don't win and play away games. So I was super happy that yeah. we at least pulled out a win. Yes. Um, that was huge for us, although the sloppy play was not what we were hoping for. Right, and like you said, a lot of teams are struggling on the road. Why have we been seeing that so much? Is it just because you're more comfortable? That's like the rim that you're used to taking shots on because it seems like we always see teams win at home and lose away. I mean, it's all due to home court advantage. I mean, it's a known it's a known factor, a known key that obviously players that practice every single day at their home court, they're used to the certain angle that they're mm -hmm. shooting the ball at and they're, they just feel comfortable. Yeah. But yeah, it is definitely, it's interesting. It is. Sure. Yeah. So I guess that's why it's so important to win on the road. It really shows what you can do. What you're capable yes. of as a team. You're not just uh, winning because you're playing at your home court. Yeah. You're winning because of your ability and ability to adapt to yes. other courts. Yeah. And then going back to the Bama Mizzou game last Saturday, the score was 88 to 74 and Alex Reese, once again, coming through with those three-point shots, just really developing this year as a player. This was the game when our three-point shots really started falling again. Our previous two games before this game, we've been struggling with our three-point shots, and they weren't falling. We were shooting them, but we weren't definitely weren't getting as many as NATOs would like to get. So this game really helped out a lot. It still wasn't our best game, but it was a good game. And what's most important out of this game didn't even come from Alabama is that Mizzou went 31 for 31 from the free throw line, which is just incredible in its own. Then continues to go into their next game against Texas A&M. I want to say it was at home, I could be wrong, and continues making all their free throws, makes 51 free throws, gets to the very end of the game, has to make one free throw to tie it up and misses their first one. So while they did break a record for making 51 free throws, 
consecutively they did lose the game. And this Saturday is our next game at Coleman Coliseum at 5 p.m. So we are playing Kansas State. And let's talk about that <laughs> brawl that broke out against Kansas State when they played Kansas. Thoughts? Well, it should have never happened. I think that's the obvious here. So well, What shouldn't have happened? The brawl? The brawl. But what started it shouldn't have happened either. I guess the player got embarrassed that what happened was it a steal or something. I really didn't watch the game. I just watched the fight. But he came back down and then tried to stuff maybe the other guy that was shooting the layup. And I think he was successful. And then he stood over him as if like, yeah, like I just did that. And then that player didn't like it, stood up, started a fight. But why did everyone get involved? Even the cheerleaders were involved like trying to hold back um just really not sure well there was so much talk and discussion about this brawl and it is super disappointing to see that in basketball but i mean it's basketball fights break out in every sport however the more that i read about it the ncaa has talked to a lot of different coaches not just both kansas state and kansas coach but they talk to other coaches in college basketball, and a lot are actually saying that what Gordon did when he stole the ball from D'Souza, that shouldn't have happened because they were dribbling and keep holding on to the ball because they were just running out of, they were trying to the run score the clock. wasn't even close. They were trying to run the clock. They were down by like 25 points. So that shouldn't have happened, True. and that was very unnecessary. Gordon, he got a breakaway and he was trying to do it. He was doing a layup, but uh, D'Souza swatted the ball away. And obviously, I mean, I, I get that, but I think that, first of all, D'Souza should not have been standing over Gordon like that, showboating like that. But I do have to disagree with Gordon. Like, what was the point of get, what? That's like basically, like, what's the point of taking the ball away when you're down 25? Obviously, they're trying to run the clock to end the game. So when I see it from that perspective, I hadn't heard that perspective. I kind, I kind of have to blame both, both, both sides. <laughs> both sides. Um, I think that it was terrible though what happened and how that brawl broke out. Also, D'Souza, one of the one of the players grabbed a stool and was going to use it as a weapon, <laughs> and the assistant coach took it away. And I think that is also terrible. However, this this isn't the first thing that has gone down with the Kansas team. Um, they had another issue which resulted in a technical uh, being called, but um, this goes way beyond that with the amount of people that were yeah. not involved, the teammates. But also they're saying that the brawl broke out after the game was finished. So that also apparently is playing into that. But Didn't it resulted. They put one second back on the clock after the fight is what I heard. They're saying that apparently the fight was running after the game ended. Who knows? I'm very confused <laughs> very, by it. Very, yeah. Anyways, it was altogether just bad on both sides, I have to say. Okay. But it resulted in two suspensions for both yeah. teams. Two of those players from Kansas State that are suspended. One had five points in that game. One, what did you say, hasn't played? He's played two two minutes the whole season. Two minutes so season. it's it's interesting that those two players, two that are not key players, right. decided to, you know, get started with that brawl. It's interesting that everyone decided to get started with it. I understand the people in it to break it up, but I'm just confused why both benches decided to come join everyone was fighting and also I just am curious how they picked who is suspended and who isn't but you have to win fair and lose fair and respect both sides no matter whether you win or lose so Saturday should be an interesting game hopefully they don't bring that energy into Coleman I would hate to see that come from our players and definitely wouldn't expect it to come from our players but this is a big game. Also, this is a big game for Kyra Lewis Jr., as we were talking about, because as we all know, Kansas State's coach, Bruce Weber, was the Team USA coach this past summer, and Kyra played on Team USA. There are a lot of people talking about how Kyra was benched in the championship and how this is his chance to prove himself. Yeah. So do himself, for sure. Yeah, exactly. And, I mean, Kyra was playing great for Team USA, so why he decided to bench him, I don't know. Team USA still won the gold, so... That was good. Maybe it was the right call. Maybe it wasn't. So we will see how he shows up to play. I hope he doesn't come in emotional 
and use this as an emotional game, but maybe with just a little chip on his shoulder to show what he's made of. I mean, I don't think that it'll result in an emotional play. I think that, if anything, it's going to motivate him to really right. play his hardest and to play hard. So I'm really looking forward to that. And I think that our most important step moving forward is to fix that sloppy play, yes. stay aggressive, and become more fluid like we all saw in the Auburn game. I think that since we are at home as well, we will be a little bit more comfortable than we were at playing totally. at Bandy. Yeah. Moving on to other Bama sports, Bama gymnastics is off to a great start. They just lost to Oklahoma, which is a great team, only by a few points, which is outstanding for Alabama gymnastics. Speaking of, we are not just a football school. We are actually a huge gymnastics yes. school, and we actually won our first national title in gymnastics. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. <laughs> so we are not just a football school. No. <laughs> um, but a huge standout gymnast is Sydney Doggett, and she was named the SEC Conference Specialist of the Week. She has led the team's scores, and by her scores, she's gotten over a nine on both the uneven bars floor and beam. Wow, that's impressive. Yeah. Doggett's score on the uneven bars pushed Alabama to a 49.425 team mark, and that's its best total on the event since 2018. Um, she's actually ranked number one in the SEC on the uneven bars, so super excited to watch Sydney. She also goes by Macari, but um, <laughs> Sydney Macari dug it <laughs> this entire season. Their next meet is this Saturday against Oklahoma, Georgia, and Denver in Texas. Excited for that. So also coming up in 15 days, our softball team, Team 24, will make its debut. And this team is already preseason ranked as number one. So I'm super excited to see how this team does this year. The SEC Conference announced its 2020 preseason All-SEC Softball Team Wednesday. And like you said, Alabama led. And they led the league with the three players on this list. Um, seniors Bailey Hemphill, Alyssa Brown, and sophomore Montana Fouts represent the defending SEC champion on this preseason team. And also we are 22 days away from baseball season. It is Coach Bohannon's third season returning as the baseball head coach. Some key players to keep your eye on who were a huge part of last year's team include uh, Brett Auerbach, Brett Auerbach, um, shortstop Colby Robinson, Drew Williamson, and outfielders Tyler Gentry, TJ Reeves, and among many others, catcher Sam Prater will return from his arm surgery that limited him to only six games last season. So I, I think we have a pretty good team yes. that is being pulled together, and I'm super excited. Jade and I actually just got our credentials and our passes to be able to go to the practices and games and also interview some of the baseball players. So we are super excited to yes, report on baseball. We, are. we will have lots of content coming your way come baseball season, which I guess is basically almost here. <laughs> also, it's so important to note that our cheerleading team, All Girl, came home with a national championship last weekend. This is huge. They compete against so many teams every year. And they came back with the national championship for the first time in, it's been a couple years. Mm -hmm. And also our co-ed team got second place in the national competition. They came in second to, I want to believe it was University of Central Florida. They beat Kentucky. Kentucky got third. And for anyone that knows, Kentucky cheerleading is the standard. It is basically the Alabama football cheerleading. They have 24 national titles. And they wow. usually come back and win back to back to back. So a few years ago in 2015, Alabama co-ed knocked them off to win first place. This year they knocked them off to get third, but Alabama they really took second. them off their groove. <laughs> yes. Yeah, they did. All right, so let's do some talk on the Senior Bowl. We have we just got news that Raekwon Davis has pulled out of the Senior Bowl due to an injury. Which if you guys heard, we actually were just on side note. We were just <laughs> on the Martin Houston show yesterday, and every Wednesday now. We will be on his show. It appears on Facebook Live, and it's through Tide 100.9 FM radio station that we are interning for this semester. It was a great experience. We had a lot so of fun. talk yeah. with the Senior Bowl at BAM Basketball and Football, so we'll just kind of like hit on what we talked about yesterday. Yeah, but also if you want to catch us on the Martin Houston show, like she said, it's on Facebook Live 
every morning from 6 to 7. We know we will be on there on Wednesdays. Mm -hmm. He likes to call it Wow Wednesday, Women on Wednesdays. But we may be coming in on Mondays too, and we're still trying to figure out a couple other things through our internship there, so we will probably be appearing on a couple other Mm -hmm. shows. But back to the Senior Bowl. Like she was saying, Raekwon Davis pulled out of the Senior Bowl, and as we said, it was an ankle injury that we heard, and we hadn't thought of it any other way until... Martin actually yesterday just decided that he thinks it's not just the injury, it's more of a publicity stunt from his agent that just wanted to get him down there and let these people see him in person, see his true size, and do the media days, and then not play in the ball and just prepare for the combat. Well, another thing that I continue to really relate back to what was said yesterday at the Martin Houston show I got to say, if I were a senior and I was playing in this bowl, I think I'd be kind of worried about staying healthy for the combine. I think I would want to want to really focus on that and rehab and make sure that I stay healthy. But it is a huge opportunity for all these players yeah. since it is coached by two professional coaches and all the coaches come as well. Yes. So <laughs> it is hard to really know what his reasoning is for that. I mm-hmm. think that obviously he has the best in mind, though. Of course, well, uh, Nick Saban had a little bit to say about it, just that he encourages all the players to play in it, but that Raekwon Davis had reached out to him and told him he wouldn't be playing because of ankle injury. Mm-hmm. So I feel like even Saban at this point was thinking, you should play, you got invited, you accepted it, but it's up to him and I don't blame him. And agree, just yeah. like Terrell Lewis didn't play an R ball game, and I don't blame him for that because no. of his injury, but he also hasn't had the best year plus his injury, so he's going to play in the senior bowl with all these NFL coaches there to show his final debut of what he can do before the draft and before the combine. And I think this is a great experience and just overall really good for players, especially more under the radar players. You don't really see players like like Joe Burrow and Jerry Judy playing in this because they already have their they already have made a name for themselves. And they don't need to. We were both looking at the roster. And a lot of the players, we were like, oh, I don't know who this is. And that's just because, like, it's not your top players. So even though Raekwon Davis will not be playing, Jalen Hurts will be playing. And he will always be an Alabama player to me. And also um, Jared Maiden will be playing and Anthony Jennings and Terrell Lewis, as I mentioned earlier. So we still have a couple of Alabama players playing. And Nick Saban is down there right now. But good luck to them, and I hope they do really good. All right, so with Jalen's helmet, there has been a lot of talk that his helmet has both the Alabama logo and the Oklahoma logo. I think that this is great. However, it has been confirmed that he will not be wearing it in the actual bowl game, which I think is the best decision. There are a lot of controversial yeah. comments made about it. Yeah. Um, but like he said, he's Bama for life. I think that everyone that goes through this program is Bama for life. What right. you, what's your opinion? Yeah, I think maybe the helmet was just a gift to him, and I'm not sure really who decides what helmet he wears, whether it – be who's over the senior bowl or it be Jalen or who they're letting factor in their opinions. Is it the media? Is it the outside sources, the fans who's deciding really what helmet he wears? I think it's great. I think he should be able to wear both helmets. As I said yesterday on the radio, Jalen came to Alabama. He graduated from Alabama. He took us to the playoffs two years. He played in the third one. And then he went to Oklahoma, which was obviously for his best interest Interest, yeah Yeah, and then took them to the playoffs so I mean Jalen is half Alabama half Oklahoma through and through so if he wants to wear the helmet with both logos I say let him but you know it's fine if he doesn't either way like everyone knows he played for both schools I don't think the helmet really matters that much yeah it's another thing it kind of is interesting to me how people have such an opinion about this you know so yeah it's also interesting how much he's talked about in the media I saw Someone I mean, say, he is a huge figure. Huh, like college yeah, football. but I saw someone in, in the media say that why is Jalen Hurts getting talked about so much? He's not the first quarterback to transfer, and that's true. That's true. But he's just he's such a big role model for everyone. I mean, he should be. He's a leader, and he's done great things for both schools, as I said. So I just think he's just been very well known, very talked about. And if they want to make a big good deal, guy, everyone cares about him. Yeah. yeah. So it's just because he is who he is, not just because he transferred from Alabama to Oklahoma. So we decided that to end all of our episodes, we will now be ending with some professional sports talk so that you guys know that we, you know, we like both college (laughs) sports and professional sports. So let's talk about Derek Jeter. He's getting inducted into the Hall of Fame, Mm -hmm. but he was one vote short of being 100 
a hundred percent voted. I would and love to know who that one person was. You know, there's so much talk about it and so many people are upset, but then there's also so many people that aren't upset. Mm -hmm. For me, I'm like, how could you not <laughs> right. vote for him? Yes. But I mean, I think that there's obviously a reason. There is a reason. I saw something that said if this person had his vote to do over that he would have voted him in. And I was like, mm, well, probably because yeah. it's been a really so big much deal. Talk, yeah. yeah. Moving on, Zion Williamson had his debut last night for the New Orleans Pelicans. And he had a great game, very high scoring, made his three pointers. Uh, do you have the exact? Yeah, he on. had 17 straight points in three minutes and 29 That's seconds. Crazy. And went four for four from the three. So, Really awesome debut. I'm a huge Zion fan. I always have been since he was at Duke. Don't like Duke basketball, so don't come for me, but I, I've always loved Zion, so to see him do so well and make a great debut was awesome. It really shut up the talk from all the people that just didn't believe Zion would be any good in the NBA. I think you I think you could it, but it didn't shut out all the talk about him because so many ESPN analysts well, yeah. are talking about how he didn't look his best. He looks sloppy. It looks like he is slow and you know, I feel like he's I think always that's, looked slow. He just is such a he's big, a big guy. guy. He's a big guy. <laughs> he, I wouldn't say he's slow. In my opinion, I think he looks like more controlled. He is, I mean, he's fast, but he really does look like he has control of the ball. He stops and then he shoots. So he always takes control. And I think that that should be different than being slow on the court. Yes. Also, Eli Manning, quarterback of the New York Giants, has just retired. There's also talk whether or not he's going to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. My opinion, I think that winning two Super Bowls, yes, and being named MVP of the Super Bowl, is more than enough. To yeah, be that is a shoe in for me. Just go ahead and put him in there. But of course, there's a lot of talk about that, or if Big Ben should be inducted over him. So we'll have to stay tuned and see what happens with that. Also coming up, we are also going to be doing a Super Bowl segment where we will break down the Super Bowl and <laughs> give you guys some of our pro NFL talk. Yes. Um, so the Chiefs are favored to win by only one point. <laughs> and I think that is crazy. I mean, I'm actually really hoping for the 49ers. I'm a huge Jimmy G fan. We are both huge Jimmy G fans. <laughs> And coming from, I just want a California team to win. Right. Since I'm from California. I do love but, Patrick Mahomes, though. I mean, I'm really indifferent on the Super Bowl. Like, whoever wins, I'm getting yeah, I mean, happy for. Yeah, I mean, he's, I think he's very deserving of it, too. Mm -hmm. One of the best quarterbacks in the NFL yeah. as well. So stay tuned for our Super Bowl episode. And that's all for this episode. We hope that you guys enjoyed all of our Bama sports talk. And we are looking forward to talking to you guys next time. We actually are just getting ready to be on the sports cast within the next few hours. So you guys will be able to hear that tonight. And this will be uploaded tomorrow. That's all for today. I'm Caitlin Heffler. I'm Jake Taylor. Roll, Roll Tide. Tide.